Hi, my name is Isabella Condo Olvera, or Isa for short, and welcome to my channel. So today we're going to be talking about how to self-tape properly. Okay, so a self-tape is pretty self-explanatory. You put yourself on tape or on your phone. That's what I'm doing right now. And you send that in either to your agent or to a casting director or to college if you're applying for performing arts colleges. And it's becoming more and more common. Even prior to the pandemic, people self-taped a lot and asked for a lot of self-tapes. But now that we have this whole thing going on, it's like it's super necessary. You're either sending in a self-tape or auditioning through like a video chat. So I'm going to be talking about some tips and tricks to make sure that your self-tapes look as professional as possible and you can book. And yeah. Okay, so my first tip is just like treat it as you would an in-person audition. Prepare as much as you would. Use what you already know about auditioning in putting yourself on tape. Make yourself up. I think it depends on the character. Some auditions, they're like really into just natural and no makeup. Some like you have to put some makeup on, you have to get your hair ready, but just show your best self. Tip number two, use a tripod. Now, I'm currently recording on my phone. I do not have a tripod. I'll take a picture of this whole setup in a bit and put it right here. So if you don't have a tripod, get yourself a stable setup. Um, I'm gonna be getting equipment soon and I'm excited and my self tapes will be better than ever and it's gonna be great. But if you're not in the place to buy a bunch of equipment, um, I think you can totally get like well done self tapes if you just follow these tips. But just make sure it's not shaky. That just makes casting directors like dizzy and they probably won't take you as seriously if it's not well done. Three, use your smartphone. And this I think is flexible if you have a really good camera that you can use, that also works. But a lot of camcorders that people use for self tapes actually have worse quality than your like smartphone camera. So at least test it out, test out what equipment you have and realize with the things that you have, what works best for your situation. Four, get a good reader. So this doesn't apply to all self tapes, but if they are for professional gigs, a lot of the time what you'll get is a scene and you have to put yourself on tape as the character you're either getting called back for or they ask you to tape or whatever. Um, so you're just putting yourself and then someone is behind the camera um, reading, reading the other lines. So. Again, within your possibilities, get yourself a good reader. Right now, don't break your quarantine or be unsafe in doing that. But if you can get someone that A, makes you feel comfortable, B, can put like, can get cool things out of you because acting is reacting. So if you have a very dry reader, it's harder. I've had several different friends be readers and honestly, it's a good time. I think there is a disadvantage though to like having uh, someone really close be your reader because it just becomes a mess. Went from rocking your fuck. <laughs> <laughs> rocking your fuck. The Christmas tree. <laughs> Five. Film horizontally. You would think this is logical, but a lot of people film vertically and do not do that. Oh, there's a bug on my phone. Number six. Follow the directions. Read them, reread them. Sometimes they want you from the chest up. That's been a lot of the ones that I've done personally. Um, if you're a dancer and you're putting yourself on tape for dancing, then like be sure to show your whole body. Sometimes for like musical theater auditions, they want to see your physical communication and the way that you act with your whole body. And so they'll ask you for like from the waist up or like from the knees up. I've had those too. So just be sure to like read the directions and follow them. Seven. 
steal him. Sit. Don't look at the camera. Just as a general rule, if you're just doing a normal scene, which is what most of these self tapes are, have the reader very close to the camera so they can see your reactions, but just look kind of close to the eye of the camera so you can, if you're fully visible, they can see your acting and everything. But people kind of get creeped out if you just look at them and you're just like, hi. No, it's on my phone again. Wait, Ocho. Eight. Try to keep your background as plain and simple. This would not be a good self tape background because you would get distracted and be like, what is that? And it is a painting from my mom's book. It's special. Um, but see, now you're looking at that and you're not looking at me and that's not good for an audition. So try to make it plain and simple. Um, just like one color, any space and you're probably self-taping in your house. So just find a wall if it's blank and go for it. If it contrasts well with your skin, like if it's extra special, then that's even better. I kind of just do white walls because it's what I have in my house. Nine, oh, I can't help. So just make sure you have the best lighting possible. Similarly to like your equipment and what you're gonna to use to film, just make sure to try different options out compare them, watch them. Um, I think it's pretty important to always watch yourself even before actually like getting the official self tape and just like knowing what your best options are. Um, so make sure to do that. Ooh, also for lighting, avoid weird shadows. <laughs> Try to avoid background noises. And this is something I struggle with significantly. I literally have a self tape that I taped like at the school where I used to train um, and there was like an acting class going on and one of my friends was just like kind of or something like that and like that's literally what it sounded like. I was just kind of being like I don't know like doing a monologue or something and you could just softly hear the uh, and you're lying it, it was bad. I think I still sent it in though. Um, so don't do that. Right now you might be able to hear my mother. In quarantine, it's kind of hard to get your whole family to be quiet because they have things to do, um, but within the possibilities. I can fully hear a bunch of background noises right now. Can you hear them? I hope you can. If not, that's just like a really hypocritical way to give advice, but this isn't a self tape. <laughs> 11. Okay, so for slating, again, just follow directions. Usually your safe bet is your name. If it's a film audition, where you're based is something is that's just pretty standard. What piece you're doing. Um, though if like, it's just the same audition by a bunch of people, they might not ask you to slate your piece because they know and they're just having a bunch of people do the same pieces, so. Depends. Um, I've had to sweep my height. 12. Limit the amount of takes that you take. I'm really bad at this one. I don't really do this one, but it's good advice and you should follow it, not be stupid like me. Basically, you need to do the preparation beforehand, and I do do that, but I'm very much a perfectionist. Very? Did I say very? I'm very much a perfectionist. And so I am always like, oh, that wasn't that good. Let's do another one where I can do this different. And then I'm like, mm, still not it. And then I just keep taping and then I have like 12 options and then I spend like two hours just watching myself and feeling shitty about myself. And then it's just not a good time. And a lot of the time I end up like picking the first one because you usually, if you do too many, you get in your head, you like start overcorrecting things, it just gets less natural. Like just get three takes that are like full and you didn't mess up any of the words and like make sure to watch yourself and make sure that your tape is cut. So like usually I leave a little leeway to cut um, and then I send the thing on my phone because I do use my phone and then I send it to my computer and 
I think actors really do need a computer, especially now. I just feel like it's so necessary. Um, and I highly recommend Alienware for video editing and like high quality video. And I think the reason why it's so important to watch it on a computer and not like your recording device is because it's most likely that whoever is casting will be watching it on a computer. So you just want to make sure that it looks polished, it looks professional, make sure that you edit out those like awkward spaces. It's just like as concise as possible, as clean as possible. Ultimately with self taping and remote auditioning, just have a good time. Auditions are a time for you to practice your craft, for you to grow, even if you don't get it, because a lot of the time you don't get it. Try to just like have a good time. Self taping can be a lot of fun. I'm not the best self-taper. I am an expert by no means, but I have had some experiences with that. That's how I got an agent through auditioning through self-tape for a specific project that ended up not going to me, but ended up giving me an agent who like has got me, gotten me like other auditions and stuff to tape for. So I think it's important to dominate these techniques. Um, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was of some help. If you did enjoy this video and you'd like to see more videos like this in the future, be sure to subscribe and like this video.